So I saw a comment. Uh, I've just got some vegan pizza here. Eating vegan pizza for breakfast. Not much fruit going on in Adelaide at the moment. So we've got vegan pizza options. Domino's vegan pizzas. Five bucks each in Australia. Spicy veg trio. Hold the cheese. Yes, please. Quality fresh Domino's pizzas. Proudly brought to you by. Um, that's activism. You know what I mean? That's activism. When you tell teenage kids, hey guys, you can eat vegan pizzas at Domino's in Australia for five bucks. You're getting pizzas out the door, motherfuckers. Vegan pizza for 20 bucks. That's only for people like me who've got money. But Domino's, man. Biggest vegan activists around. Covert. Better, even know, better people knowing it. Fast food chains doing vegan food. That's converting the masses. Making it vegan. Veganizing. Veganizing mainstream fast food corporations. That is vegan activism. Putting on a little... Anyway. So we have a... Uh, this is regards to Adelaide Vegan Festival, which I was, I'm a fan of. In uh, this comment from Charlotte, I agree that it would be better if vegan festivals were free. London Veg Fest, I think, on the door was 18 bucks. 18 pounds. 18 quid. 18 squid. Uh, though you could get advanced tickets for half the price. Once you're in there, the average price of anything to eat was 8 pounds. I know that there are associated costs, but it's not bringing the meat eaters in. Patrick Boomian, the swole dude, strong man, did a talk in a packed main auditorium. He asked, how many of you are vegans already? And every single person raised their hands. Maybe they were scared Patrick was going to deadlift him out of the room if they didn't. As the festivals are so expensive to attend, especially if you want to eat a lot, they are becoming more exclusive vegan community events. Exclusive vegan community events. Place to be seen and known. Rather than outreach. So I agree with uh, Charlotte's comment there. And I, I think that is the thing. It's become this little click, money, money, money. and Because there's a lot of money to be made in the vegan world. And this is like the raw food world. I remember the raw food world blew itself up because it got so competitive, so competitive, charging this, charging that. And then... Poof, the raw food world ate itself apart, you know? And now raw foodism is pretty much dead. There's a couple of YouTubers making some vids, but there's no events. When was the last time there was a raw food festival? Because they got so expensive, people were charging like 20 bucks for some kale crackers or, it was insane. And then it just, it just people got so greedy, the chase to the, for the money just poof, imploded. And I see that in the vegan community, even in Australia, they got the speakers, having banned with each other and it's like I want more Patreon more dollars than you and I want this and I'll sell more t-shirts I'll sell more hats and it's crazy you know like like my videos don't just like all, all this nonsense and it's just creating this exclusive vegan community and that is not outreach outreach the best outreach in the world in my opinion let me know if you disagree down below is the church the church is out there they got people out there on the street you see is, are they Mormons the guys with the white shirt the black pants always friendly always chipper and they're riding their bikes all around places i see them in adelaide all the time i see them in thailand and i generally most of the time i say good day to them and i'm always wearing a vegan shirt i don't leave the house unless i'm flying the fucking v flag you know and then we talk to them and i talk to them and i say hey god wanted me to obviously to meet you today you know and they're like yep that's that's how it works and i'm like you know and we start talking about veganism a bit and bike riding and some of the guys are really interested and some of them just change the subject straight away and as soon as i do that i know they're not interested i'm not, I'm not going to pander and preach and yeah, waste of time. I just drop the seed and go, oh, guys, enjoy Adelaide, enjoy Chiang Mai. We'll see you in the road. Godspeed on your journey. And uh, but they're out there all every day, and they're not they're not saying, hey, give me five bucks, and you can listen to hear me talk about the Bible, are they? They're never doing that. You go to any church around the world, it's free to walk in and listen. And this is my issue with these festivals charging money. There's no accommodation provided. There's no food provided. You got Woodstock Fruit Festival. Which is great because it's got food and accommodation provided. People just want a package, they do it. Cool. A day festival like Adelaide Festival, or the London Festival, whatever, people have to pay to get in. And there's no food and accommodation. There's just stuff to buy. So it's just this mass money. And they came, it's non profit. How the fuck does it cost five bucks entry for Victoria Square? It doesn't cost that much, you know? It doesn't cost that much. Um, I just filed a few emails off to Victoria Square to. The Australian Parklands, uh, Adelaide City Council, cityofadelaide.com.au. Just ask him how much it actually costs to rent out Victoria Square. And I'll let, get, and I'll let you know. And the, I spoke to some of the vendors at Adelaide Festival. And they're like, just struggling to make ends meet. It's expensive. And a lot of these are small, struggling Australian Adelaide local businesses. You know? And they're struggling to make ends meet. And they got to... It's just... So when you... Oh, it's crazy because Victoria Square is like the epicenter of Adelaide. A lot of people have never been to Adelaide, but Adelaide's the best place in Australia. Come to, come to Adelaide. Victoria Square is like, you know, has Aboriginal uh, 
what's the word? It's um, you know, it was a meeting site for the Aboriginals hundreds and hundreds of years ago. It was like a centre point, and now it's just been concreted, bricked up, and it looks nice, but it's lost its you know, it's lost its essence from what it was maybe ten years ago, twenty years ago, thirty years ago, and and now and seeing an event where people you can walk through Victoria Square. It's a beautiful square, you know, just the vibe. It's the city, you know, it's, it's nice. It's not as nice as it used to be. Twenty years ago, it was a lot more natural. It had trees, and it was just—it was really cool. You sit down on the trees, and now there's no trees really, but uh, they've made it architecturally pretty. And anyway, so everyone walks through there on the way to work, and all of a sudden, people go to walk through Vic Square, and there's these fences up, and they're like, "Oh, it's a fence," and they're like, "Well, can I walk, go in?" Oh, it's five bucks entry. Oh, what is it? Vegan festival for five bucks? What? And it's sort of frustrating, I think, for a lot of people who normally just walk straight through the mall, uh, straight through Vic Pet Square, maybe. They, get the tram or whatever, or the bus, or they come from the central markets, and then they've got to walk around this vegan festival. And so if you're non-vegan, you know, what does that do for non-vegans? I've got to walk around because these fucking vegans are having a festival and it costs five bucks. What? The Tour Down Under festival is free. And that gets so much traffic, just people walking through, it's free. You know? The storeholders have to pay, but everyone else, just walking through, it's free. You can hang out, catch up with your mates, it's free. And they get so much traffic. You know, and so, but he's. <laughs> oh man. But are we, are we trying to make veganism bigger, or are we trying to make the profits bigger for ourselves? And that's what I'll see. I'll see once you throw money in the sun, it gets so corrupt. I mean, pro cycling, pro running, pro swimming. You throw the money in it, and now the vegan scene is like money on Patreon or YouTube views. And I'm guilty. I'm guilty because I promoted how much money can be made, and so you, you attract a lot of people who just want a free ride, free ticket, and they'll stab anyone in the back at any cost. You know, everyone's your friend until they see you as competition. Everybody's your friend until they see you as competition. And then when they're like, oh, 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 they'll get the knife and put it in. Um, but it's sad. But I, I do feel vegan festivals should be free. Let us know if you agree. Give this video a thumbs up if you agree. Vegan festivals should be free. Give this video a thumbs down if you think the, the festivals should cost money to enter. And then the food is prohibitively expensive. The only passionate vegans are on it. I mean, like, I remember my friend Jade in 1999. I think it was 99. Maybe 98. I think it was 99. And we're going down Rundle Street. And there's a place called Veggie on Loving It, which is the oldest vegan cafe in Australia, longest running. And Jade, he, he bought himself a tofu burger. He said, do you want one? He said, oh, I don't eat tofu. And I, I, was, I, think, I think maybe I asked him how much it was. And it was like maybe five bucks back then. They had about 15 bucks. And I said, uh, yeah, I don't know. And... He's like, no worries, I'll buy one. If you don't like it, I'll eat it. I said, okay. And so that was very generous. So Jade gave me this, you know, this gourmet tofu burger, and I got to try it. And I was like, fuck, this is good, man. This is good. But if I had to pay for the burger, I wouldn't have been interested. Because my head is like, oh, soy is fucking bad for you, or it doesn't taste good, or whatever. Soy is for pansies. But because I got a free sample, that little bit of activism, that little bit of generosity where Jade gave me a bite, a chance to experience a vegan burger, that planted a massive seed in my head. A massive seed in my head. So when I came across Vegan Lifestyle a couple years later, 2001, I was like, straight away, I remember, oh, that burger was really fucking good. Okay, so this is possible. If I just could live on those burgers the rest of my life, I could probably be a vegan. And then I learned about vegan pizzas and just, you know, vegan athletics. And that's what made me go vegan was that free stuff. Free stuff. Free stuff. You walk down the run, walk down Rundle Mall on a Friday night, Saturday night, you often get church people handing out free stuff. If you had to pay for the Bible, how many Bibles would be spread around? You know, how many Bibles don't get stolen in hotel rooms because they're free. If a Bible was worth fifty bucks, people would steal it and go sell it to a bookshop. You know, and some people say, "Oh, you got to charge things, otherwise people don't value it." I agree, I agree. But when you're trying to get a message out there, you know, that's what I love about YouTube. People can learn for free. People want can buy my ebook or whatever if they want more consolidated information. But people can watch five thousand vegan videos, clear vegan message videos, for free, for free on my YouTube channels, and that's pretty cool. Um, that's why I love YouTube so much. That's why I'll never ever leave YouTube ever. If channels get deleted, boom, back tomorrow, back tomorrow. And, and it, these people, uh, I'm trying to not I'm trying to digress too much, um, trying to keep the drama out. But I feel, I believe things should be free. Festivals should be free. To for, I believe, vegan outreach should be free. You know, it should be free. If we're trying to get non-vegans over, offer your friends some vegan pizza. Offer them a vegan burger. You do what my friend Jade did to me in '99. 
give me off, offering it to me. You know, don't even sometimes don't even tell them it's vegan. You know, <laughs> depends how close minded they are. Just just make them a hot dog. Don't even tell them it's vegan. Just make get them a soy dog with some tomato sauce, some Master Foods barbecue sauce, whatever, and veganize it, and don't even fucking tell them. I say, what do you think of that? You know, what do you think of that burger? What do you think of that hot dog? What do you think of that ice cream? Because sometimes if you tell tell someone what it is, they're like, oh. You know, just like when Jade told me he's, he's going to give me a soy burger, I was like, oh, you know, I was like, I don't usually do soy. I had all these things in my head about soy. So we have this anti-vegan world we live in. Why make it harder by putting up paywalls for a festival event? Because you're there's such a powerful thing. You're in a public area. You walk through there Monday to Friday on your way to work. You come to the city and you go to walk through and then you got to walk around. You're like, what the fucking... And then you're just thinking in your head, like, these vegans cause me an inconvenience. But if you go to walk through the festival and it's free, you go, wow, these people are having fun. There's a lot of slim women here. There's a lot of fit-looking guys here. This is pretty good. Oh, there's a bit of food here. Oh, that's pretty cheap. I might try that. When you've got to pay 10 or 15 bucks for an ice cream or a burger or whatever, and you're not a vegan, you know, that's not a vegan outreach. Yeah. Um, it is crazy. So that's why McDonald's is doing so well because there's, there's stuff so cheap compared to a lot of the vegan establishments. I mean, Domino's vegan pizza is five bucks. How much does a vegan pizza cost where you live? At a vegan cafe or something like that. It's not five bucks. So, and I get it. Some things cost more and I get that, but I think we should be really looking at minimizing our personal profits and maximizing our outreach. Maximizing our outreach, minimizing our personal profits, living more simply that we don't need to put on you know, events that create a lot of money for us. But at, as a result, non-vegans suffer, small vegan businesses suffer, etc. That's my belief after being vegan for 16 years, April 2001, and putting on free events myself. I'm not one of these people who go, oh, I think it should be free, but I don't do fuck all. You know, I've put on the longest vegan festivals for free ever. Three weeks, two weeks, four weeks, six week festivals. Every day turning up, answering the same questions again and again for free. Coaching people get on YouTube for free, getting it done. That's vegan outreach. Um, I do believe vegan festivals should be free. What else can we talk about on this little rant? Um, it's, you know, like, I think I'll wrap it up. There's other videos, other subjects I'm going to cover, but uh, let us know, do you believe vegan festivals should be free? And how are we growing the vegan movement if we're just preaching to the choir? If we're just preaching to the choir, how are we, how are we doing that? The fuck is baby Kayla doing that? How are we doing that? If we're just preaching to the choir, when Patrick gives his speech to vegans, how is that helping non-vegans? I mean, it's great. It's good, but is it the best? In a world of good, better, best, let's go for best every time. Let's go for best every time. So wouldn't it be cool if the London Vegan Fest was free and Patrick the Swole Man was on stage talking to meat eaters and say, hey boy, you got no pro come, and, come and deadlift me. I'm a vegan, you're not. You should be able to be stronger than me. Imagine how cool that would be. That meat eater who got on stage trying to do the deadlift or the whatever, and got smoked by a vegan on stage in front of everyone. And, and it was fun. He wasn't fucking shamed. And like, oh, you're, you know, like some of these vegans on YouTube, man, vegans, leather strong ones, um, talking about, they just trash all these farmers and stuff. And these farmers are never going to go vegan. You know, they're getting publicly shamed on YouTube. They see themselves on there and they're just building up hate and resentment for these vegan activists out there. Can you imagine being that farmer's daughter? Yeah, the farmer's probably grabbing the girl's phone. Who the fuck do you follow on social media? You follow any of these vegan hippies? If you go vegan, you're the fucking out of this house. That's what's gonna, you know, that's 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 the reality here in Australia. I don't know about the US or Germany or whatever, but in Australia, that's how us Aussies work. That's another video. But imagine how cool that would be if you have all these non-vegans being exposed at a festival, in a public air, little concert sort of mini thing, where you got you know swole guys like Patrick and that doing these feats of athleticism and strength. Just proving it on. Because all us vegans know how fucking strong Patrick is. Like, cool. But that doesn't help us at all. We, we need the mainstream seeing guys like that. We need festivals for free where guys like that are, are shown, showcased publicly. You know, in the malls, etc. You know, put him in a little cage and get him to lift shit up. This guy needs plants. That's vegan outreach. So that's my little rant, rave. I do feel, i say it again, that vegan festivals should be free and we should be like the church was bringing people, welcoming people in. No drama, no fucking craziness, just bringing people in. Yep, no worries on the same page. Come on in, man. Check it out. It's vegan food, vegan hot dog. Check it out, man. Make it cheap, make it cheap, make it cheap, 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 cheap. You know, make it cheap, make it affordable, make it easy. Make it $5 vegan pizzas, Domino's Australia, man. 
do you, Domino's Australia changed their menu because of one YouTube video I did a few years ago. They got so many phone calls. I talked to their customer service a couple years ago, and I'm like, you guys need to do like a vegan menu sort of thing. And now at my local Domino's here at Tranmere, they have a, on this thing, a little purple sign, what vegan foods they have at Domino's. You go to their website, and now they have, you know what I mean? Because they got sick and tired of people calling up. Well, what's this little... That's the power of YouTube. That's vegan activism. When you're getting mainstream stuff going on. Mainstream, mainstream, mainstream. There's all this talk about, let's make the world vegan. How the fuck are you helping people go mainstream vegan? How are you helping the mainstream go vegan? By putting up conflict videos about farmers or charging money for festivals that should be free. That's not making shit mainstream, man. That's making little micro-economies so you can profit. You can put profits before people. We've got to put people, we've got to put the planet, we've got to put animals before our profits. I live a very, very simple, altruistic lifestyle where I don't need to make a lot of money to buy vegan ripped shirts I've had for two or three years. You know, I can live on cans off the street. And that's why I do what I do because vegan outreach is the number one thing for me. Leave your comments down below to share your thoughts, share your comments and criticisms. Vegan festivals should be free.